Statistics Learning Centre presents Understanding the Central Limit Theorem. Hi, I'm Dr Nick and I'm going to talk about the Central Limit Theorem including four important aspects. This video complements our video calculating a confidence interval for a mean using a formula. It would also be useful to watch our video Understanding the Normal Distribution. The Central Limit Theorem was first suggested several centuries ago and many traditional statistical tests and procedures are based on it. The Central Limit Theorem is concerned with the sampling distribution of the mean. The sampling distribution is the distribution of means of samples taken from a population. Usually, we do not know the mean of the population, so we take one sample. We use what we know or find out from that sample to make an inference about the mean of the population. We use the mean of the sample, x bar, the size of the sample, n, and the standard deviation of the sample, s. I'm going to talk about four aspects of the central limit theorem. Aspect 1. The sampling distribution of the mean will be less spread than the values in the population from which the sample is drawn. Aspect 2. The sampling distribution will be well modelled by a normal distribution. Aspect 3. The spread of the sampling distribution is related to the spread of the population values. Aspect 4. Bigger samples lead to a smaller spread in the sampling distribution. I will now illustrate these aspects with an example. We have a population of dragons and we wish to know their mean strength in order to tell whether the change in climate is affecting them. We want to compare that with information from previous scientific studies of the dragons. Each dragon is represented by one of these data cards. From experience we know that the range of dragon strengths goes from 1 to 8. There are 720 dragons in the population and we're taking a sample of 4 dragons. These are very small samples but are useful for illustrative purposes. How likely is it that the average strength of the four dragons will be one? You are right, it is very unlikely. All four dragons would need to have a strength of one for the mean strength to be one. If there are equal numbers of dragons at each strength, then the probability of getting four dragons of strength one is one eighth to the power of four, which equals 0 0.00024, or one chance in 4096. Similarly, it is very unlikely that the mean strength will be 8, as all four dragons would need to have a strength of 8. Let us take some samples of our dragons and see what the mean strength is for each sample. Here's our first sample. The mean is 4.25. And here is another sample. The mean is 5.25. And here's another sample. The mean is 4.75. And here are a few more samples. The means are 6, 5, 3.5 and 4.5. It could take a long time doing this by hand, so let's set up our computer to simulate taking 4,000 samples of four dragons from our population. We can only do this because we happen to know all about the dragon strengths, having made them up in the first place. This is a simulation. We would never know this in a real life study. Here is the distribution of those 4,000 means from samples of four dragons. Let's look at the four aspects mentioned before. Aspect 1. The sampling distribution will be less spread than the population from which it is drawn. You can see that most of the sample means lie between 3 and 6, and all of them lie between 1.75 and 7.5. Remember, the population values lie between 1 and 8. Aspect 2. The sampling distribution will be well modelled by a normal distribution. You can see that even with samples of size 4 that the distribution resembles a normal distribution with a bell shape. If we take larger samples the distribution gets closer in shape to a normal distribution. Here are graphs showing the spread of sample means of dragons from samples of size 16 and 50. You can see that the shape is getting more like the normal distribution. This is also shown in our video about the normal distribution. Aspect 3. The spread of the sampling distribution is related to the spread of the values in the population. 
Say a different dragon population had a spread of strengths of 1 to 20 instead of 1 to 8. You would expect the spread of the sample means to be greater. Here is a graph showing the spread of sample means from samples of size 4 from a different population of dragons. These dragons have strengths evenly spread between 1 and 20. You can see that there is still the bell shape, but for these dragons most of the sample means lie between 6 and 16. Aspect 4. Bigger samples lead to a smaller spread in the sampling distribution. The bigger the sample, the less likely it is that all of the values will be small or that all of the values will be large, so that the chance of extreme values is reduced. Here is a graph showing the spread of sample means of strengths of dragons from samples of size 25. And here is a graph showing the spread of sample means of strengths of dragons from samples of size 50. You can see that the spread reduces as the sample size increases. The spread of the sampling distribution is related to the square root of the sample size. Two important notes. You only ever take one sample from a population. We took thousands of samples to illustrate what a sampling distribution looks like. The central limit theorem only works under some conditions and with big enough sample sizes. 4 is actually far too small, though you could still see the effect. Under most conditions, samples of 30 are sufficient. This video was brought to you by Statistics Learning Centre. Subscribe to our channel and visit our website for more resources to help you learn.